Hello everyone, my name is Emily and this video should have been uploaded a very long time ago. Hi, future Emily here. This video really should have happened a long time ago because all of this audio was recorded in like early May before I lost my voice. It's like July now, so <laughs> just letting you know, future Emily out. But I had finally received my silver play button and at first I was like, I want to display it. But then I looked at it and I'm like, I want to wreck it. Mm. But before we dive into that, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Today's this video was sponsored by New Amino Stories. First of all, if you don't have an Amino account, I highly recommend you head on over and get one. Amino is more than an app. It's a community of communities. As an Amino user, you can join as many individual user-run communities as you like. It's all about connecting like-minded people. What's even more awesome is that Amino has rolled out a brand new feature, Amino Stories. This really gives users a chance to be more creative and to be more interactive with their followers. You can search for a key phrase up in the search bar, narrow it down by selecting topics, select a topic you're most interested in, and voila, an endless stream of entertainment. You can check out some of the stories I've posted by searching for Emily Artful under the users tab and following me. My username is, of course, at Emily Artful. I found Pipa's art on Amino and instantly followed her account, knowing she makes great watercolor art content. There are just so many unique creators creating so many unique stories on this platform. So make sure to download Amino and start your story today. Now initially, when I knew my play button was on the way, I was pretty sure I was going to do something to it. At first, I kind of played with the idea of painting on the actual reflective part of the play button itself. I thought it would be kind of cool if I used acrylic paint to do like a partial painting so some of the play button would show through. But when I received the play button, I realized that the mirror is not flush with the rest hmm. of the plaque. There's a pretty deep indent that goes down to the mirror and then it rises up again where the actual play symbol is. So I was like, poopy. So much for that idea. That's right, I said poopy. Don't judge me. That is like my favorite naughty word and I swear to God, having a kid has not made me any less vulgar. I just... I love to say poopy. It works for any occasion. Annoying character voices aside, I was really disappointed when I was confronted with this predicament, but then I was like, you know what? I don't have to be over the top and decorate my play button. I'm just going to hang it and leave it be. So I put it up in this pretty place near my desk on top of my pretty jewelry box, and I hated it. 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 Oops, I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. Did I mention I hated it? Okay, that sounds really, really obnoxious. I am really, really grateful that I got my play button, but I wanted to mess with it. I wanted to wreck it. I wanted to paint it. I wanted to make it my own. Um, and it's not that I absolutely couldn't stand it sitting there looking at me. I mean, it's a reminder of something that I worked really hard for, but I just, I wanted to, I wanted to put my own little spin on it, you know? So instead of pulling my hair out, trying to wedge a paintbrush on that mirrored surface while getting paint up the sides of the indentation, and just making a big frickin' mess, I decided instead to make a template. Boo! Boo! Clickbait! Boo! But I got you, bitches, because I put a question mark in the title. Come and get me, cuppers! You'll never take me alive! I don't know what's wrong with me either. I decided to make a template with watercolor paper, so what I ended up doing is taking masking tape and just kind of wedging it, <laughs> just wedging it into the, the crevice. Two fingers, crevice. <laughs> I put the tape in the crevice, then I layered the tape in the crevice, and then I took an X-Acto knife and cut around the edges to get the excess tape off. Once I did that, I carefully removed what was left behind, and let me tell you, uh, like a plate? Is that what I want to call it? A plate of masking tape? <laughs> it is a very interesting texture. Um, it's what a, I imagine a mummy would feel like. Perhaps an Office Depot mummy, if such a thing were to ever exist. So I took the masking tape template and I put it on the back of the watercolor paper that I wanted to use. <clears throat> B paper, nobody surprised. I actually turned down an ambassador deal with them where they would like send me products and I would review them every month because they said I couldn't be naughty in my videos and I was like, eh, I love you but I don't love you that 
that much. But anyway, I stuck the masking tape on the back of the watercolor paper because if y'all know masking tape, it's gross, it's gooby. I would imagine that it would affect how the watercolor paper would absorb. So that's why I put it on the back of the paper so it would not affect my actual painting space. I traced it, I cut it out, and I stared at it. <laughs> Help, I don't know what to paint. The first thing that kind of threw me off was that um, the template was not 100% perfect to the shape of the play button, which I knew it wouldn't be. Masking tape kind of expands and can stretch, but the little gaps around the edges kind of bothered me, and I feel like if I just painted on the template and stuck it in, it would look kind of strange. So I decided I was going to play with the original idea I had of the mirror kind of poking through, but we'll get to that in a minute. My first stage of course was going to be to brainstorm. I wanted to create something that would represent me, the things I like, the way I paint. Um, so of course I came right to skulls and flowers and sparkly things. Uh, duh, bitch. I got a comment on like two videos ago where it was like, you shouldn't be calling your audience bitches. It's degrading. And I'm like, um, bitch, ask any one of my regular viewers, any of you guys. And I know your answer would be, um, bitch, bitch. Yeah, she calls me bitch because I call myself bitch, bitch. Cause we boss ass, bitch ass, bitches. I am debating whether to censor those bitches, but it just feels wrong now, you know? And like I said, my content is now officially PG-13, and bitch is a PG-13 word. I know you guys miss the R-rated language, but I'm trying to dial it back just a little bit so not everything I do is demonetized. You know, I'm like that level where you would want to send a permission slip home to your middle schoolers kind of vulgar, like, yeah. I'm, I'm right there. Like maybe the kid whose parents sent him to school with like a woven lunchbox and he only eats like chickpeas or <laughs> like that kid's parents wouldn't sign the permission slip, but like everybody else's parents are cool. Everybody feels sorry for chickpea kid. Comment down below what you would share out of your lunch with chickpea kid. Mind you, he has a <laughs> a rind allergy. So he can't consume foods with a rind. Okay, we are so, we're on a, <laughs> we are on another planet from the topic of this video. I, I am sorry. So when I came to the realization that I wanted the skull flower sparkle aesthetic, as well as like it to be kind of PC and let the mirror show through, I kind of had to break down exactly how I wanted to do this. I broke up the template into quadrants and corners. So instead of just having a random flower floating around in the middle of the page, I wanted to make sure everything kind of grew out from the corners of the template. Now, initially I was going to use all watercolors throughout this thing, um, but watercolors are obviously a very translucent medium and I felt like juxtaposed against the mirror, it wouldn't look as stark as something like acrylic or gouache would. So I used watercolor here and there, but the main medium that I ended up with was gouache. Now I don't use gouache as often as I use watercolor and the main reason I wanted to use watercolor completely was because I felt it reflected this period in my artistic journey very well because I use watercolor almost exclusively. But compositionally the gouache would look better so I gave in to the gouache but the actual subject matter I wouldn't fudge on. I wanted what is represented on this play button to reflect the now in my artistic journey. In 10 years from now I maybe probably will be drawing something completely different. I may be drawing something that's living and joyful Oh my God, God forbid, I can't imagine it. What is going on with the world? You know what's really funny is all the time people see my artwork and they go, are you okay? But what's crazy is no matter where I've been in my life, happy, sad, totally ecstatic, totally miserable, I have consistently drawn the creepier, weirder, darker kind of stuff. I always found it fascinating that it's beautiful. In death, we are inherently giving back to the earth that gave us life in the first place. There is beauty in tragedy. There is beauty in sadness. There is beauty in darkness. And all those words, they don't mean the same thing to me. Something can be dark and not be sad. Something can be sad and not be a tragedy. The more macabre and dark sides of our minds and our world and our emotions, these things are so complex and dynamic. I feel like there is a handful of people that look at my art and they just go, oh, this girl is sad, this girl is depressed, and even though, yes, I have had experiences with depression, I feel that I have created some of the darkest works that I've ever created when I have been the most content and when I have felt the safest. Because at that point of vulnerability, I 
you know, kind of allow my imagination to explore these places without fear, without anxiety, without feeling like I'm going to drudge up some deep, repressed memory that's going to mess me up. I feel safe. I compare this kind of introspection to deep sea diving with proper equipment compared to deep sea diving without proper equipment. So if you are in a good mental health space, you have all the proper equipment, deep sea diving into your emotions and the darker side of your brain is kind of a breeze. Um, you're able to sightsee a little bit more and absorb a little bit more, and you're able to take snapshots of the things that before would have seemed terrifying. Compare that to being in a mental health space that is unstable, that is unsure, insecure, and filled Filled with anxiety and dread. You are deep sea diving with the wrong equipment. Therefore, you will be crushed under the pressure of the ocean or your anxiety. And because you're already panicking and preoccupied with the crushing weight of your anxiety and insecurity, everything around you seems 10 times more terrifying. You are being crushed. You are panicking. There is no way you'd be able to take a snapshot of anything in order to see it more clearly. I don't know if that analogy will be helpful to anyone, but it was certainly very helpful to me when I first started kind of thinking about it in that sense. But once again, we got off topic. It was more of a philosophical side road this time instead of a comedic cul-de-sac, if you will. But once I was finished with my painting, I went ahead and cut out the individual corners and I stuck them into my play button with a little bit of washi tape. And here is the finished product. It came out exactly how I wanted it to look. I feel like it adds a little bit of my personal flair to it without completely erasing the fact that it's a play button. And of course, I am really proud of myself for working so hard to get here, um, but this would be nothing. All of this would be nothing without you guys and without your support and without your kindness. Um, and when I say support, I don't just mean like you guys subscribing to me. I mean your constant uh, reminders of why I'm doing this. Yes, of course I'm doing it for myself because I love it, because I've dreamed of getting to be an artist for a living, even if it's in a kind of different way. Um, but I do this because I know some of these videos mean so much to some of you guys. And um, that in itself, like that in essence, gives me so much strength. And every morning I wake up with this completely warm and full feeling throughout my entire body. Even on bad days, like one good comment can just like turn everything right. It's at a point now where the bad comments just kind of fall to the wayside. It's like they, they don't matter. I, I don't pay attention to them because I feel like just you guys, like my regular viewers and my new regular viewers, like there's just so much love and warmth and strength in this little art community of ours. Like it just, and it, and it stretches out throughout all of the art YouTubers. And I just feel like I'm just really lucky to be a part of this community. So thank you guys, thank you so much. And real quick, thank you so much for being so kind to each other. Like I love when I see someone comment talking about having a hard day and then I see another viewer come in and try to comfort them. Like that, that, that right there is why I do this and why I feel so fulfilled doing this. You guys are just wonderful. God, I could, I could gush on forever, but truly, um, you know, this is a wonderful community. I am very, very thankful to be a part of it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, never forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later.